Good evening, we're live. Happy holidays from Channel 17 and CCTV. I'm Lauren Glendavidian and we're here at our annual holiday party here at Channel 17 Studios in the heart of the old north end of Burlington. And I'm so pleased to welcome you. If you want to stop by, it's 515. It is the 15th of December and there's still time. We're having the party till seven. So come on over, we'd love to see you. We have all kinds of wonderful people. It's not election year this year, so we're not seeing as many politicians, but we might see a couple mayoral candidates later on because it is town meeting. Oh, that's right too. Richard Kemp is here with me. Richard, welcome, thanks for coming. Well, thank you very much. And I also want to extend an invitation to fo folks to come and partake in some delicious food that uh, you didn't mention. And it's just absolutely sumptuous. I haven't even gotten to the dessert table. Well, you've got to kind of have your basics first. <laughs> you just got to the appetizers. Now, Richard Kemp, you may know, he is the host of Near and Far, which has been running on Channel 17 for many, many years. How many years, Richard? Do you remember? Well, it's confidential. I can't give out that information. But you have had <laughs> many shows with some amazing guests. Over 100. Is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. impressive. And, and it's only because you help and make that available for... Any citizen who wants, not, you, know, you don't have to be a citizen to use it. Yeah, anybody who wants to use this and has something to say or something to share with. So. And that's what public access is all about. Yes, that's make, absolutely. Make media. Yep. And it, can, you, can you tell me any of the recent shows that you've had folks, I know you've been excited about in the past couple months. Tell us about one or two of those folks that you've interviewed. Oh, you have touched on my memory and it's shot oh man well there was a guy there was a guy and you came in you said this guy is incredible and he had done some community-based work was it abroad or here or, i mean you have the personality parade people who are activists and who are actively engaged in changing the world and that's what's so interesting about your show well the other thing is that, that people can go to the archives and pull up programs in fact, just recently I had uh, uh, Elijah Bergman take over my Progressive Thought program uh, because I couldn't be there to run it, and he ran it, and I watched the whole thing last night. And then I had to get back to him and said, what a wonderful job he did. He was a little nervous about it. Did but you it watch just, that online? Yeah, online, yeah. Right. So it was, it was kind of nice. And I think that sort of technology makes it um, very accessible and available. So I, I couldn't be on the show, but I couldn't see the show, and I couldn't see it at the same time, but I could see it a day later. Well, and also, you know, the live show, the Live at 525 show streams live on the, on the Internet, so you can watch that while it's happening. Yes, and I, I'm delighted that having been around CCT for some time to see the increased technology and making stuff really available for people to see. And it has to do with the person standing next to me. Makes well, that happen. And all the people in this room. And your staff, too. Unbelievable so. group of people. I mean, the election coverage we did, the season started two months early. Mm -hmm. And there we are, the Democratic Caucus covering that with a live stream from two locations, the Democrats and the Progressives. Right. I, yeah, I saw that. And that, that so that helps to... Um, <clears throat> help the population know about what's going on because maybe people couldn't get out to it or weren't there and um, it's just supporting democracy in a very important way should be happening all over the country I don't know but I don't think so well I was glad to be in my house on Sunday night watching you speaking in the in H.O. Wheeler school that was terrific so we're going to give out some awards tonight oh Okay. And maybe uh, you might you might want to help me. We have um, with the first. We're going to talk to Elsie Nova Hines, mm -hmm. and Elsie, Elsie, come on over. I've got your award here. Welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks so much for being a great volunteer. Let's stand in the light. Come on over in the light, and then uh, we got Richard here with us. We're all hopping in on this one. So you have you get acknowledged as a Channel 17 TV volunteer and willing guest. So when we're short a guest sometimes you chip in which is awesome and um you're consistent and you come every what, what night of the week do you come every, every monday every monday night <laughs> and and tell us a little bit about what you get out of being here at channel 17. well i mostly come for sorry uh, i mostly come for mainly an educational experience because i get to listen to a lot of smart people talk about a really a lot of really smart things and i feel like i get some additional information out of it also it's just, it's nice because I get to learn a lot more about technology since I work around technology when I'm here. So that's 
what I think I mainly get out of it. And what grade are you in now? I don't like to tell people my age. Well, it's all right, but I mean, are you almost going to college soon someday? No, uh, no not soon. But, um, I, I don't like to tell people my age because people just freak out because I'm a lot younger than I look. So, oh, really? Yeah. Well, you're also a lot smarter than, you know, your age might be. I mean, so that's the thing. So it doesn't really matter chronologically what age we are, right, Richard? Right, yeah, because I don't tell my age either. <laughs> Except I was born in 1932. Were you really? Mm. I was born in 1960, so there. <laughs> and I still like to think of myself as precocious. So in any event, this is about Elsie. So here, I'd like to acknowledge you for all your work and um, your commitment to Channel 17. And thanks for giving us some quotes that we could use for the annual campaign. It's awesome. It's been really helpful to do that. And um, any, any messages that you have for people that might be thinking about volunteering? Uh, yes, definitely volunteer because it's a good educational experience and you'll definitely enjoy it and it won't get boring and it's just, it's a really good opportunity. I recommend taking it. Thank you so much, Elsie. It's great to see you. Really great to see you, really. Thanks a lot. So, you know, we have, when you do your show, whenever it, you do a live show, the folks that run the cameras are all volunteers. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. I didn't realize that. And um, LC and Henry Prine, who we're just about to talk to, um, have moved up from camera work to directing. Oh, right. So oh. they're controlling the control room. And here comes Henry Prine right now. Okay. Henry, come on up. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hi. You know Hi. Richard Kemp? Yes, I do. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about why, what you do here at Channel 17 and why you do it. Well, I volunteered here on Monday nights for the live show doing directing or camera work. And I do it because it's fun, and it's really a great way to learn about politics and get your hands on technology and stuff like that. So come in the light a little bit more. Um, so tell us about some of the politics that you stay on top of being here. Well, you hear like it's different than just reading the newspaper because you have all sorts of different views you get on Monday nights. You have the Democrat show, Peggy Loris does a show, and so you expose all these different stuff that's happening now and it kind of it informs you really well it's, it's really interesting because you get to while well, you're directing you're not only putting on the show but you're really listening in and hearing what the people are saying and you help out on election day in the morning when we do the exit voices what tell us a little bit about what that experience is well that's one of my favorite days of the year i always look forward to going out with megan in the morning um and interviewing people at the polls and I don't know, you just get to, you get kind of a sense of why people are out there and why elections matter to them. And especially when the big ones come around, like the Obama election, there was a lot of people out there and it was, a lot of them had stories to tell. So it was nice to hear what those people had to say. How does this compare with what you're doing in school? School, I mean, you have social studies class and you hear a little bit about what's going on now and then, but you're learning about history 200 years ago and you don't hear much about what's going on right now. So this is a much more interesting way to stay on top of current events. Well, it's wonderful, Henry. And are you going to college soon? I think so, yeah. I'm a sophomore in high school right now, so, so yeah. A couple years. And are you, are you thinking at all about what you might do or where you might go? Yes, I, I'm thinking a little bit, but it's, it's really hard. There's so many different fields I could go into, but. Well, that's because you have a really open mind. And so people with open minds have a lot of options in front of them. So thank you so much for being with us. And here's a little free speech champion of 2011 award. And thank, thank you, you so much, Henry. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Henry. Uh, that's kind of amazing. <clears throat> it is, this person is a sophomore in high school, right in the middle of the technology and doing it. I mean, <clears throat> I'm, it's, it's exciting. What were you doing when you were a sophomore in high school, by comparison? Riding my bicycle and chasing girls. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were pretty cute. <laughs> well, there was no public access in, uh, in the 40s. <laughs> right. Well, and there was only one or two channels, really. I mean. Well, and as a kid, we didn't have television. Really? Maybe television wasn't really around in the mass media kind of thing. That's right. Andy Crawford, welcome. Thank you. Andy Crawford is our, our tech whiz. He makes um, things happen. I try to. And, you know, to just even give a small indication of the kinds of things that you do, why don't you just talk about what you did in the last week? What I did in the last week? Well, last, the last week I've been spending time 
getting stuff ready for all the live coverage that we've been doing of uh, the caucuses and of Kurt Wright's announcement. And, you know, a lot of it's just making video available on various websites uh, from our live streams. So. And um, I, I think it would be interesting for people to know how many folks have been watching online the live coverage. Yeah, so for, um, I believe, the, uh, the cliffhanger uh, <laughs> Democratic Mayoral Caucus, we had about 1,200 or 1,300 people watch that. And then um, we had seven or 800 watch the final, the final voting round, the fourth round. And then um, Kurt Wright's, we didn't have too many people watch Kurt Wright's uh, announcement, but I think people were more hinge wanted to know the results of the other two. But we had about 34 or 35 people watch Kurt Wright's uh, announcement. So well, There was no contest there, right? Exactly, there's no contest. We, know, we knew it was, it was sort of a foregone conclusion, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, the challenge, I think the challenge that CCTV faces is, you know, we do all our video in-house, which means we we basically are our own content deployment network, which means we, we stream all of our own video, we have it all of our, on, it, on, on our own servers, we don't use services like Amazon or YouTube. And so that's, you know, it's an investment in trying to keep that local and trying to keep um, the access to that, you know, within our control. And I think that that's one of the things that makes CCTV different from a lot of other content providers. So it also makes it more challenging <laughs> and makes a lot more work for people like me. But uh, we try and do our best in terms of making it available. And hopefully next next summer we'll have uh, rolling out some new video features and uh, it'll be even spiffier and available on more devices. So, so Andy, do you see anything coming down the pike that's going to change the technology and the way we watch TV? Yeah, well, the way we watch it and the content yeah. and all, all of um, the technology around it. For sure. Um, I know. I Share mean, when, when CCTV first put the video up in this in a content management system, which was in 2007, um, you know, the world of video on the web was very different. And just in, you know, four or five short years, we've gone from basically Flash Player and we've gone from... Uh, video being sort of a rare thing on the web to for to be pretty much being ubiquitous and from no standards based anything about video on the web to HTML5 which means you know in many cases no longer needing a browser plugin to watch video on the web and so um, right now there's a huge sort of like struggle over you know people that own own the lines, the, the ISPs and the telecom companies and the cable companies, and you know, the fact that they can more easily monetize an IP, an internet protocol based content delivery system. In other words, um, they can get more information about how they're delivering ads, how many people are watching the ads and all that type of stuff. So we're seeing a sea change in the, in the way marketing done. No longer is it like the Nielsen ratings uh, for even major studios anymore, they're all interested in like how do we get the information about who is watching what, how popular it is, and you know, really trying to focus in. And it's it's all being driven by advertising, but it's like, so it's it's a little scary because the web provides so much more capability for people to get information about who is watching, how long they're watching, what they're watching, and so it's you know. It, it ends up. It ends up. It ends up bringing issue. Bring up issue, all the issues of like you know, do you want to have Google like automatically giving you lists of content based upon what you previously watched, what you're interested in, you know, and leads us to this possibility of getting into a uh, a situation where you 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 hear the things you want to hear and you see the things you want to see, and you don't necessarily see other points of view. So you know, we think it's important here that people see other points of view and have access to the all of the media that they have and you know you know net neutrality is still out there and who knows there's been a push to for ISPs to actually control um, content based upon what type of content is that's flowing over their network so like a Comcast you have a cable modem with or and a Burlington Telecom would be able to say this traffic is streaming video traffic I'm going to do a surcharge on this and or this is streaming video traffic from Amazon, and I don't, I don't have an agreement with them or whatever, so I'm going to block this content. And so there's a, there's a real risk of as we move from an analog or digital cable 
to a direct over-the-internet viewing experience for um, ISPs, internet service providers, and others to control that content in a much more serious way. It's not happening now, but who knows, in four or five years, we might, might be a very different media landscape. Um, and you know, sometimes even these cable companies are starting to buy up media companies and or vice versa, to sort of make sure that everyone has a foothold in every, wow. in every uh, sort of category, if you will. Media creators and media, media distributors and the people that own the networks that the media flows over in that, in that system. So. Which is why having local content that we have local access to and local control over is so important. And we really couldn't do it without Andy. Because what you bring to the table and what you understand and know is, is absolutely essential for us to move this programming to these new platforms. So thank you so much for being our technical guy, fixing the problems, finding the solutions, and identifying new dimensions. Thanks, Andy. Well, we gotta see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andy. It Breathtaking. It sounds like several, several liberties are coming into play here, with corporations being able to control the content or what goes on and doesn't go on, and that's kind of serious. Did you see? Um, did you see Jeff Chester when he came? Jeff Chester talked about that, and um, I'm going to say something about that in a minute, but Phil Levine is here, and Phil Levine is personally keeping the doors to local city government open. And I have to just say that I admire the work that you're doing so much, and I'm so grateful. You are covering events that we don't cover, meetings. Tell us a little bit about why you're motivated to go to City Hall and cover the finance board and uh, other... Well, other I think it's important to follow the money. And um, I think it's really important for people to be informed. And if they aren't there, it's through this vehicle that you're providing the, to the community that uh, allows people to be informed, you know? And I think that's really important, okay? So I think the whole community should really be grateful that we got Channel 17. It's a gift. Well, it is a gift, but it would be, if unless anybody opened the package, like you, like Richard, <laughs> It would be a gift that remained unopened. So I think that that's why what we feel is so important that these facilities are here for someone like you to learn how to use the, I mean, and it's been a while, you know, it's taken you a while to really get oh, the hang. Yeah. It's pretty well, complicated yeah. sometimes. And every once in a while, you know, you kind of forget where you're at and you got to call for help. <laughs> and then the fire brigade standing by. Yeah, and Jeff's been really good at uh, helping out with that, you know. And then Richard, you know, he does a show, he hosts a show, so he just sits here behind the desk. That. and <laughs> That's a good deal. It's a, <laughs> a little easier. It you is. But whatever is so neat about it is, I mean, I don't have to pay to get a half hour. No. And, and no one is censoring who I bring on or what we talk about. That's a good thing. I mean, oh, that's magnificent, I mean, in this society. Absolutely. It's important yeah. for, it, for all these angles to be seen by the public. Uh, because we know on regular TV they don't get to see all these angles, you know, and it's really, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of censoring that goes on. We know that, you know, and we don't have that here. Well, so, thank you, Philip. We really appreciate it. I'm gonna My pleasure. Up. Phil Levine, Channel 17 community producer, shining the light in the often unseen places. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Keep it up, Phil. Yep. So, um... Don McDonald is here, oh. and Don McDonald keeps us straight. I have to say, um, there's a lot of work that goes into running Channel 17 and CCTV, and it's not just making TV shows, it's keeping all our data organized. And not only does Don McDonald come every day for Ooh, three, every day, every day <laughs> as a volunteer for three or four hours a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? But I do some, I do my own shows too, and you know. That's right. Preparing. But why is it important for you to come here and help us, you know, with the data? But, I mean, that's what you do. But there's a yeah. bigger, there's something bigger well, for you. It's, it's the community. I mean, I love the community, and I love the community we live in. And, um, you know, I'm retired, and it's just a great place. And, you know, I get to have some of my shows once in a while, my own shows, this kind of thing. So. And what your particular area of interest is transportation? Right, specifically inner city bus transport and uh, developing uh, basically a replacement for Vermont Transit. 
um, and also honoring Vermont Transit's history. We've done quite a few shows on that, and um, we, uh, I've been talking to people from Megabus about the service that just started, and uh, the state also has a lot of uh, ideas that are coming up, so uh, we got to keep the eye on that. Yeah. Well, you are. I mean, personally, Don is keeping his eye on it. And not only do we have these amazing archives here, video archives, but Don is a living archive <laughs> of Vermont. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, yes, yes. You had it. We you had are. a discussion earlier today on that, and I've decided that I have to. I got to do something. I got to figure it out. I can put what I got up here on the paper or something. On the video. Don, I, I want to give you a little information that probably make your heart feel good. I got on the bus going to um, going to Shelburne, and I couldn't get a seat. Richard. The bus was full, and Richard, I, that, that's. Richard. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, but well, no, it's happening more. Yeah, now, the, the line. There's several runs uh, that CCTA has had to add extra coaches because of the demand. Just recently, um, the federal um, uh, authority uh, started uh, made them run two extra runs on the Essex Junction run in the evening to cover uh, for the crowding. Now, on Saturdays, if you try and take the run that goes out to Umaw. That's packed, uh, we're, and we're talking crush zone loads, where where the passengers are up to the uh, yellow line, and and the uh, driver can't accept any passengers. Somebody has to get off, and wants somebody to get on. But I I just took I just came out on the uh, on the North End Loop run, and that was a 700 series bus, which is a fairly large bus, and it was cr packed. And it shouldn't be today because the kids are are gone from UVM right now. It's exam time, and so theoretically it should be a light time. But I've gone to Montpelier where there's been standing room on the run to Montpelier. Right. They've had to put some extra runs on the link. They have one in the morning coming from Waterbury that just services the Waterbury run because they've got a lot of people coming from from um, from Stowe and Morrisville that connect with that run. So it's uh, you know it's growing, and there's there's a lot of demand out there. I in my mind it's been it's been fortified by a lot of statistics. You know. So. Yeah. Don, thank you. You're amazing. Yeah, you, and I wait. Come back. Uh -oh. Don McDonald, CCT volunteer, keeping it all in order and having a great time doing it. <laughs> Thank you. Free speech advocate. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Better you better believe it. Stay done. Thank you. So we're having a great time here at the CCTV Channel 17 Holiday Party 2011. We're so glad you're joining us. I'm here with Richard Kemp. We are um, honoring our free speech advocates, and we have Jenny Davis here. And Jenny Davis bag in hand she's ready to go thank you for joining hi, us Lauren. nice to, see, to you. see you hi richard thank oh, yeah. you so much what a nice event it's a great event and thank you for all you do all year round well we'd like to thank you because you are a free speech champion of yes. 2011 yes. and i want to oh, just jenny davis who is a channel 17 community producer makes community connections and uses the community media to make it happen yes we do well thank you very much this is so nice yeah i i feel like i'm accepting this on behalf of all of the neighborhood planning assemblies in burlington who definitely utilize airtime on channel 17 and cctv um, we're really grateful to be able to have the meetings on throughout the year it enables people who can't make it to the meetings to be able to still see what's going on and participate in that way um, and I also know that there's people who watch different pieces of meetings from different wards wards that they don't necessarily live in but they're interested in a particular agenda item so um, you being here makes it possible for that to happen so thank you for this um, honor and recognition and thanks for this great party and for everything you do Jenny don't stop what you're doing yeah <laughs> I mean, it's a great credit that we have neighborhood planning assemblies that are vital, yeah. and you play an important role in, in herding the cats and helping make, make the mechanism of neighborhood assemblies really work and make them relevant for people to come and get information and try to make change on a neighborhood level. Yeah, thank you for saying that. I feel like there's a lot of people in Burlington involved with the MPAs who work really hard every month to organize the agendas and get people to turn out, and then of course just the people who come to the meetings. Um, Burlington is really unique in that we have NPAs as a forum for people to engage if they so choose. So, and you know, there's a lot of elected officials who, who come to those meetings and it's a chance for people to connect with um, their leaders 
you know, in their neighborhood as opposed to in, in a bigger venue like Contoy. So it's a good thing. It's all good. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good to see you both. Holidays to you too. Jenny Davis. Jenny Davis is with the Community and Economic Development Office in the city of Burlington, and she's the queen of the NPAs. <laughs> We're so glad she's here. So um, Bill Aswad is, has been doing a program here. He is a representative. He was a longtime city councilor. And Bill Aswad has been doing a program here for 18 years. Here he comes. And Monday is his last show. Bill Aswad, God bless you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. You know Richard Kemp? Yes, I do. Your last show. I did my show. I've been doing it, I did it for 18 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah, come sit so the camera and can Mon see you. Monday will be my last one, I think. And who's your who's your guest on Monday? Um, I, I'm trying to remember. Oh, Weinberger. Oh, you're gonna- Mero, Mero, yeah. Great. Yeah. I got D Dave Sharp, you know, has my co-host. Yes. So I can, he's gonna take over the program. He is. Yeah. And why have you done this show for 18 years, for so long? Well, I just like to keep busy. I don't like to sit and vegetate, so I keep looking for something that's interesting. And I hope I make a small contribution. Well, the show was originally the Road Scholars. Yes, it was. It started out as the Road Scholars. Because you were on the Transportation Committee, is that I right? at that time, and I had Sonny Audette with me. That's right. <laughs> and I had to tell Sonny, we ask questions. The guest that we have answers questions. Sonny talked and talked and talked and talked. <laughs> <laughs> and I got him aside after, the, after one of our sessions. I said, Sonny, we ask questions. We don't do the talking. <laughs> and then you changed the name. I changed it to the legislative report. That's right. Yeah, I no longer wrote scholars. But you've had the governor on, the speaker, I've all had, kinds of I've had, I've had, I've had at least two governors on and the, the, wow. and the speaker and some senators and some, some good good guests. It's been amazing. I really appreciate your dedication. And you've never missed a show. Pardon? You've never missed a show. I've never missed a show. No. I, mean, I mean, come on. No. We're talking 18 times 12. 18 years. <laughs> wow. What's that? Good That's record. 200 something shows. So Bill Aswad, veteran live show host for showing up and speaking to the voters for 18 years. Well, thank you very much. I'm flattered. Thank you so much. Great Thank to you see you. The great job that you do. Thank you. We appreciate yeah, it. This is a, this so a, maybe you're the grandfather of uh, public six, television. Six grandchildren. No, no. Oh, uh, of television. Grandfather of television. <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm the um, old man. I, I'll be 90 in January. I'm oh, good. 90. That's awesome. I'm just going to ask Carl if we can keep going. Yeah. Can we keep going? Can we keep going? One minute. Can we keep going? Okay. We're going to keep going. So uh, thank you so much. We've got some more people to honor. Oh, but Bill, you are awesome. This will, this will go on my, uh, my magnetic refrigerator door. Awesome. <laughs> Good. I should put some magnets on there. That would work. Oh, my goodness. We got some stars here. James Giroux is here. James, welcome. Thank you. James, you are the artful word. You have been producing TV for a long time and you handcrafted pieces about the community out in the field, no studio work. It is amazing work, thank yeah. you. Well, I'd like to take this moment to, I know I've been really busy, and sometimes adverse things happen, you know, not only in the community, but to producers, and I'd just like to thank everybody here at uh, Channel 17 for standing by me in, in some hard times. And I'd also like to thank my sister and wish her a Merry Qu Christmas and my favorite nephew because I haven't had a lot of time to, to spend with them because I'm doing a lot of production, but that's what really uh, I'd like to do. I'd like to volunteer in the community and I suggest that we need producers, you know, uh, we need more people. Get a camera, get behind the camera. You don't have to be in front of it. Take a microphone. You'll be interviewing a governor, a senator, a famous musician. Uh, it's just a great thing to do. And watch The Artful Word, watch Channel 17, and come here and do a production. And just say one one thing about how important doing this show has been. I mean, I it's it's given you a, a way to be in the community, hasn't this show? Yes. Uh, well, I started out making videos and uh, just 
as you know, if you people familiar with my show can see the the sea smoke, which I uh, did with an analog camera. But I uh, I started at the bottom level at Channel 15, not knowing anything, and then. Uh, I really got to love to run a video camera and, and I crossed over to doing uh, still work on top of that. So, but what was your question about the, me and the community? Well, I think that the program has helped you to be seen by people in the community too and given you a place. Right. Uh, the, especially the Tibetan community. It's, it was really ironic to. Uh, just to have them welcome me into their into their society and say you're you're one of our brothers. This just recently happened, and they said you can work with us anytime that you wish. So uh, it's made me more advised. I started off uh, as a dyslexic kid, not being able to read and watch Dan Rather all the time, and I made myself very informed. Little did I know that watching Dan Rather in the news, making me informed, would make me into a guy that. It's not afraid to approach someone, well, maybe a little trepidatious sometime by the way you approach people, but people are willing to talk to you. And uh, really, get a camera, come to Channel 17 and do this. Thank you, James. Let's see James's award. Wow. Channel 17 community producer, ubiquitous and persistent. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to doing some more productions and keeping busy. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, guys. James Chiro. The Artful Word. James Giroux has done some really great programming. So we have um, some other folks who aren't here right now that I uh. just want to recognize. We have um, Jeff Wyman, who is, a, who is our channel director here, who has really stepped up to the plate. And um, we have Kirby Dunn from Homeshare, Vermont. And Kirby has done some amazing work here at Channel 17. Um, and also as a, a client of CCTV Productions. And maybe you could do me a favor and get Nick because he's right there and I'd like to recognize him. Um, Nick Carter, I've got Nick Carter here. Nick, how are you buddy? Pretty well, how are you? Good, so we're honoring you as a free speech uh, advocate for 2011. Nick Carter runs Common Good Vermont. He shoots Channel 17 meetings. He's an all-around, I mean, just on a baseball team, you'd be playing first, second, third, shortstop, <laughs> pitching, and managing. You are just an all-purpose player. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And why is it important to you to work here at CCTV? CCTV is a bastion of free speech in a more complicated and complex world that we live in. Free speech is more important than ever. It's important that all of you are watching and that all of you are participating in the making of media. Uh, we are media for the people, by the people. Um, so please always feel free to come down to 294 North Minuski Avenue and participate in the free speech process. Recently, you were hosting the Democratic Caucus, the live events. What was that experience like for you? That event was very, it was a very nice experience. I found myself thinking about the uh, Occupy Burlington coverage that we also did here on Channel 17 and some of the similarities of the, uh, the group decision-making process and how it's important that, you know, coverage be given to established groups like the Democratic Party as well as not as established groups like an Occupy Burlington movement, for example. Social movements are the fabric of uh, our community here in Vermont and throughout the world. And... Um, it's encouraging to work for an organization that is there no matter how much money you have, no matter how much clout you have, uh, you could count on CCTV being there. Thank you so much. Nick Carter, CCTV in Common Good Vermont, master, network, master networker and emerging TV personality. Well, thank you. Thanks. And thank you to Richard. Yeah, thanks, Nick. You know, I appreciate the coverage tonight. And to Lauren Glenn, the Thank true you. queen of free speech here in Chittenden County and throughout the state, throughout the country. It's champions like yourselves that have laid the groundwork for great things to happen. So it wouldn't be possible without the two of you. Well, look, luckily in a democracy, you can have more than one queen. Right. That's my feeling. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to Carl and to you and the rest of the yeah, crew. Yeah, they're awesome. So we're going to um, wrap our show and okay. um, go back to the party. And I want to just thank everyone for watching here at Channel 17 and CCTV's Holiday Party 2011. We've had an amazing year here at CCTV. We have um, 
We have run a new project, Common Good Vermont, for the very great success. We have gone live with events that we never thought possible. And we have um, really created a community dynamic after 27 years. Was it 27 years? Oh, that wow. um, I think we all can be proud of. So thanks very much for watching. Thank you, Richard, for uh, being with you. us. Thanks for having me here.